This is National Educational Television, a program produced for the Educational Television and Radio Center. WOI-TV presents Man and Laughter, a lecture series on humor and satire by Dr. Leonard Feinberg of Iowa State College. A Hindu philosopher once said, God gave man imagination to console him for what he is not and a sense of humor to console him for what he is. And man has been consoling himself through the ages for what he is by laughing at many of the things which otherwise might hurt him, by using that laughter to compensate for things he lacks, and by finding a pleasure, sometimes perverse pleasure, but a satisfaction and a relief, and sometimes avoidance of authority by laughing. I'm going to talk today about theories of humor. I'm going to discuss why we laugh. I'm going to examine what some philosophers and psychologists and sociologists and critics have said is the reason for our laughter. Uh, in Greek mythology, there was a character named Procrustes uh, who was a thief and uh, had a strange bed. Whenever he caught someone after he robbed him, uh, he would put him in this bed. If the man was too short, he was stretched until he fit. If the man was too long, they cut off his legs or his head to make him fit. Now, you will see that many of the philosophers I discuss have been like Procrustes, and they have tended to make humor fit what theory they thought it ought to fit. However, more of that later. Now, before we can talk about why we laugh, we ought to be clear as to what laughing is. What is the precise experience of laughter? Arthur Kessler, in a recent book called Insight and Outlook, examines the most recent uh, neurological, physiological information on the subject, and he brings up to date Herbert Spencer's theory, long accepted by most critics of humor. And this theory is that laughter is an overflow of surplus emotion. It's a getting rid of an accumulation of energy for which we can't find the usual outlet. Uh, when we have some of the other drives or desires like hunger or sex or others, there is an outlet for it which is direct. But when we have the desire which makes us momentarily predisposed to laughter and then we have to get rid of it, we are not directly satisfying it. We're getting rid of excess energy. Now, Kessler suggests also that in this process of humor, there is a conflict within the body between the energy created by the mind and the energy created by bodily emotion. And the conflict of those makes a change in the body. To see how that works, uh, I'm going to ask you now to look at an experiment that we have set up for you. Uh, sitting in the chair is Doris, who has had attached to her some time ago uh, a machine called the deceptograph. Uh, you're familiar with it probably uh, as the lie detector, but it's also used for many other purposes, primarily to measure emotional uh, differences on a small scale as a result of sudden changes in the body or psychological condition. Now, uh, Doris uh, is, has been sitting there for a while. Presumably, she is in a normal, in a uh, normal, relaxed condition. And Mr. Soar, uh, who is an expert with this thing, is now measuring her normal pulse rate, her normal breathing, and her normal skin condition. Those three things are being recorded on the uh, graph by the machine, and uh, it's a fairly even pattern that uh, we see. Uh, Doris, have you heard about the Frenchman who was visiting New York and when his uh, host uh, showed him the Empire State Building, asked him what he thought of it, uh, the Frenchman said, uh, it reminds me of sex. The host had heard many descriptions of the Empire State Building and many reactions to it, but never that one. And he said, uh, well, for heaven's sakes, why does it remind you of sex? The Frenchman said, 
everything does. Well, uh, politeness requires some restriction uh, on our part. Uh, have you heard any Youngman's story about the prisoner? Uh, the prison guard had broken up a fight between two prisoners, and he said to one of them, uh, what were you two fighting about? And the prisoner said, he called me a dirty number. Okay. Mr. Sword, did uh, the graph in the deceptograph show any changes in emotion uh, during the past minute as Doris uh, listened and I talked? It showed some uh, definite changes, Dr. Feinberg, if you'll notice the even pattern here and uh, uh, deflation there was the first story. The more marked one here was the second. Now it's back to the normal pattern again. In other words, there was a definite physiological change as shown in her pulse rate, in her breathing, and in the condition of her skin as she laughed. And it took a while to get back to that normal condition. Is that right? That is right. Thanks very much. That's uh, what I wanted to illustrate with uh, this experiment. There's nothing new about it, but I think this is a more graphic way if the picture is more valuable than the word, and presumably it is. Uh, then you have seen that actually uh, that condition is true and that there is uh, this physiological change taking place when we laugh. Now. Let's turn to the explanation, the possible reasons why